Well, it's Friday and we're in lockdown, so we've got base station Friday. So, we've got an end users radio here. We don't do end users, but this person has twisted my arm and, um, you know, it's locked down and they want to do the radio and other places may well be shut. And because we, what we do is mail order only, that is helpful. First of all, just going to chuck the chuck. I'm going to check the plug, and actually, chuck the plug is what it ought to be because it's a non-shrouded pin type. But um, it's his radio; it's not my radio, and I'm not going to spend one pound forty-nine of his money changing the plug. I'm also going to look for a screwdriver, which is more suited to opening it. Because the first thing we need to do is to check that the fuse inside is 3 amp rated and not the full 13 amps that the, cap the plug is capable of doing. My late father was one who was really good at putting the wrong fuses in despite him being a doctor of chemistry. And there we have it on the floor. Just going to check that that is tight. the cord grips in place the earth has got the longest amount of wire so it would be last to pull out if there was a mishap with the cord grip and that's a 3 amp fuse so absolutely spot on but an older type of plug which doesn't have the shrouded pins Right, now I said to the customer, these radios always hum on transmit, and that's not a fault, it's the way they were put together. We have to remember that what's inside is a Cobra SOS emergency kit in a big box with a power supply. We'll get a little note with it. Oh, a long note. SWR and power meter is not working, so let's hope it's just a switch that's stuck. Um, yeah. Could you and Mr. Chippy autograph the top of the set when you've done? <laughs> We're not famous. Oh dear, that's that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> right, muffled audio and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know how. As I say, these are a oh, that's a cord grip in there. Seems to have uh, seen better days. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do anything about muffled audio. It may well be the way uh, the microphone is and the radio is. I'll tell you what we might do, and that's so. Uh, you know, I've done Murphy uh, base stations before the CBH fifteen hundred, and. Um, I know you don't want to see these day after day, week after week, but so with it being an end user's one, it may be different because when we have them supplied by the uh, the shops or the businesses, they've already done the first line repairs. Things like dodgy microphones, uh, some of those basic things that um, people with some knowledge can actually do themselves. Um, you know, I've I've had end users tell me that they can't SWR a particular set. Well, it's you don't have to be the set, you have to be the air, or you know. So I get to us as uh, as two-way radio engineers, you know, we find some of these comments quite comical. I know there was a time in the when sets had valves in them that you had to tune the output of the set to the air. So yeah, I'm not saying that, but we're talking about solid-state sets. We're talking about the UK and everything in the UK with CB uh, coming out in November 1981. We're talking about everything being post that period. So we'll take the lid off and we find inside 
the usual oh it's a spirit 40f isn't it i'm lying about the cobra base station it's really a spirit 40f don't like the audio i see like that we're going to change the capacitors the customers that asked me to we're going to change all the capacitors in the power supply because the thing is 39 years old and is going to need it so let's see what he says about these switches being stuck Yeah, the, I don't know why that is. Yeah. Well, let's hope the meter movements aren't faulty because if the meter movements are faulty, are faulty, there will be little we can do. He's still got the plastic on the front to protect it which um, we won't peel that off so I better take the bottom of this radio off in view of us having to change the capacitors in the power supply I think we've got an HMV stereo master radiogram coming from somebody in Norfolk they're going to bring it up per personally I said leave it with us for a month and pop it back down. It's not something we normally do again, but um, you know, with this lockdown and that, well, if they want to get their 1973 HMV radiogram all spiffing, well, we'll do it for them. I'm still supposed to be working on a small organ we're installing at a, a church near here, and uh, I finally got all the parts I needed, and uh, it's just kind of shoving the time in so uh, as I've always said these are Spirit 40F in a big box let's see if we can zoom in on that it's uh, camera one Switch focus to auto. So there you are, it's spirit. And the thing is, power supply, we just moved the radio across to show that that was it. He's also spirit. So these weren't just hack. You know those Comtel base stations, which are the Cobra SOS in the big box, they were shoved together in a box elsewhere than the factory. But these were actually made at the Spirit factory, the power supply Spirit, the main board is Spirit. So that makes it a bit better. And they're very popular and seem to fetch good money on eBay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change those capacitors and I'll test them with you when I've done that. So we'll pause the video and... I'll come back to you when I've changed those capacitors. Right, so that's that done. Now, with the mic, I said it was wiggling all over the place, and I haven't checked the mic yet, but the way this, this must have had a new mic lead at some time, and what they've done is to just put a tie wrap as the cable enters. Well, the cable's supposed to go around this labyrinth of plastic mouldings as a cord grip, so hopefully we can put that back together And then it won't be twisting round and round. Uh, one of the other things which I see, it's had an awful lot of work. It's had the synthesizer IC replaced, audio IC replaced. I work all over the place. We'll be going over that with isopropyl alcohol, as I will with our own soldering. Um, I'll just put this together. And then we'll test those four capacitors that I've changed. Now there's no need to upgrade them to 105 degree centigrade rating. I probably have done because that might be what we have in stock for the one pence they cost more. Uh, at factory level, if you're making 5,000 items, it makes a difference. But at service level, it may as well just stock some of the better ones. I've had to use the 1,000 microfarad 
uh, electrolytic out of an RS supply. So that's a bit more pricey than the consumer standard. So I've no reason to think that that isn't done right the other way. So let's have a look at these capacitors. We'll just get the ESR meter and drop the rest on the microphones. So what we're hoping is that these are round about 100 microfarads, there's three of these. And when they start reading like 120, you know they're on the way out. Okay. <laughs> well, that first one is short circuit. So goodness knows what that did to the power supply. Second one's 112 microfarads, so it's high, and that is indicative of it failing. Next one's 126, that's even more out. So don't, any of you think, oh, it's better, it isn't, it's on its way when it goes like that. And this one's supposed to be 1,000 microfarads. Um, 1.1188, so again, it's reading high. So we've got one which was short circuit, and the other three are on their way out. So that was the right decision. Well, that must have affected the power supply with the short circuit in it. But it might have been part of the... Um, it may not have been something that is vital to... It's actually producing volts, so shall we say. Right, well, we better find somewhere where we can plug this in, and that is going to be kind of interesting. Why don't I unplug that? Oh, that camera goes off. Okay, so we've plugged into the video equipment now, about as long as the lead, the lead will stretch. I'll just set this power supply up, but I want to unstick those switches or whatever's up uh, before we proceed with any alignment work. I've got my eye on the time. It's currently ten past nine. Um, I've got a elderly parishioner to go and do a shopping, and that means it's eight miles away at Grantham, and she's eighty. Do you know? I think she's eighty-eight. And um, so it's a, a Morrison supermarket shop for her today. You know, I used to have a cup of coffee and a half hour chat with her. It was all part of the, you know, what, what they like to do. Um, and I don't mind at all. But with this lockdown, of course, I have to stand on the doorstep with a mask on and kind of pick up her note she's left and <laughs> you know it'd be nice when we can sit and have a cup of coffee together again oh I love the brand on these capacitors I took out uh, Lucktron and I know luck is very very important in far eastern countries and you only got to look at the brand LG from South Korea I mean the real name is Lucky Gold Star and for stuff at this end of the world they've kind of dropped that haven't they I mean, they never did call themselves Lucky Gold Star. They just called themselves Gold Star. And then they've gone to putting LG on products. But it is Lucky Gold Star. And, and um, <laughs> you know, we, we would find that amusing at this end of the world. But um, it's obviously very important to them. So these are all Lucktron brand. And we've put these boring black ones in. And that blue one as well is a, is a Lucktron. Anyway, we'll see how this thing performs before starting to poke my finger at any other um, capacitors. So I'll switch on. Oh, good grief. So we start off with a white LED in the meter. That really annoys me. Anyway, it's a customer set. And they haven't said change it. 
Oh dear. I mean, the whole idea is this is a 1981 radio, and it now looks like it isn't. You know, rolls eyes. So if we look at the output, I'll put the meter in the middle of the radio rather than move the camera around. Hopefully we can see that without too much glare. There we go. Um, let's find the output. There must be one somewhere. Oh, look at that, 13.77. So we'll just trim that to 13.8 for what it's worth. Thirteen point seven seven, near as we can get it. Anyway, it's nice to know that that's that's working and regulating as he talks to the shelf and not the microphone. So we'll just see whether this is transmitting. So I plug it into the test instrument. I've just realized there's no extension speaker socket, is there? No, there's no headphone socket on the front, there's no extension speaker socket on the back. So it not, doesn't make it easy to hook it up to the test gear. I'd better ask the customer if they want to get rid of this. Uh, that's really winding me up, honestly. Oh, and the screw's missing out of the mic plug. Knights sell replacement screws for mic plugs. They did last time I had some. I don't know of any other source. So good for them. Right, we'll switch the camera to picture in picture. And hopefully... We'll see what kind of power this is doing before we go any further. Yeah, the, the high-low power switch is jammed as well. There's only... Oh, no, 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 it's not. It's the way... No, I'm lying. Um, it's the way these are. Right, so... We're on the 3-watt scale. That's probably low power, and it's doing... Uh, if that's... 3 watt full scale it's doing half a watt which is no it's not it's doing 250 milliwatts my goodness that's making the power supply grunt uh, it's doing 4.4 watts uh, which isn't ideal either wonder if it's transmitting that hum it's uh, producing. I mean, to be honest, it's overloading the power supply, isn't it, at, um, at that? Anyway, that's something which will have to come down. It's uh, it, I can't send it back doing 4.4 .4 watts. So we'll just check the deviation. Wow! Oh dear, it's five. I bet he's coming through three channels at once. So that's got to come down as well. Yes, it's certainly had the uh, the tinkerer, hasn't it? 
Right, well, we'd better start with transmit. So with the scotch tape, we'll tape it back together. Because I managed to kind of make it work at the moment. Doesn't mean it'll work when they get it back. Let's hope it does. You don't know whether the set's been dropped or somebody's got in the mechanism or the what bearings there are of worn and failed. So at the moment it's deflecting and it's returning. So whilst it's in that good mood, let's put the front cover back on. The only thing that holds the cover on when the lids are off are the, are the knobs. Anyway, it's working at the moment. I'll come back to that deviation control. Right, we'll go on to the receiver. Let's see what we're doing on receive. So I'll move my camera on to the oscilloscope. Not that camera, the other camera. Like that. Right, let's get some receive on this. So we're on channel 20, so it's 277915. No idea what that does is it delta two so I'm going to set the delta tune to the best position which is that to the, nearly to the left on this and we'll see why that is later on so we're listening to 0.3 of a microvolt which is excellent what we're going to do is just put 100 microvolts on the radio and then somehow we're going to have to connect this to the test equi equipment no doubt with a crocodile clip lead as I said earlier, we haven't got an extension speaker socket on this type of radio. So put that on the audio hot. Should only need it on the inner because the uh, radio is earthed through the um, aero socket. And then I reckon it's T8, so we'll adjust T8. Yeah, there was an improvement there. Good. Let's just do that again. It's a bit stiff and and therefore jerky that's better so I'll work that around a bit 
So we'll go down to um, 0.3 of a microvolt again. Oh, let's see where the S meter is while we're on S9. And the S meter is reading 7. So I reckon it's VR1. 8 is. So there we are, that's now S9, and we can increase that with plus 30, we can reduce that. I've made sure RF gain is at maximum. So back to 0.3 of a microvolt and the camera onto our sign lad meter. So we need to set that so we've got about 4 decibels. It's there. That's working very well indeed. Just turn the volume down a fraction. So we'll start with T1. T2. T3. Funny, you know how many times the transmitter's screwed up, but the receivers are pretty spot on. Not sure what that one does. Let's go back to the lower setting. Check it doesn't alter the frequency. It does. So the trans the Overall frequency is set with that coil there, which is, I think, transformer 4, but I don't, I'm not sure. I can't read it. So instead of it having a trimmer capacitor, it has a coil. Good. Well, that's. Uh, let's get some readings. Murphy. CBH fifteen hundred. We'll do twenty dB. Move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. 12 dB, which is industry standard, and 10 B dB, which is the cheating standard. Uh, right. We'll start with 20. So it's all down to whether you've got noisy transistors or not. So sometimes it's a bit silly and, and pointless. But certainly at the other end, it's, it is important. So for 20 dB, the radio is what? We're on 3. So it's 1.3 microvolts. Now here come the important ones. The 12 dB. It is 0.97 microvolts, which is fine. The 10 dB. Not 
0.77 microvolts. So, yep, seen worse. Seen worse on new sets. So that's that done. So let's do the squelch. So we'll park the signal generator at 0.3 microvolt, and we'll move the camera onto the controls of the attenuator. So you know I'm not telling you porkies. Right, so we are parked at 0.3 of a microvolt. So I'm going to switch the signal generator off and set the squelch to minimum, to threshold. Switch the signal generator back on. And it's come in. We can make it go off at 0.27 of a microvolt and come on at 0.31. Let's look at it at the at the far end. See whether it's any good. So we've got the squelch now on full on the radio. So we've got one microvolt, three, ten, thirty, hundred, three hundred, one, three. Oh, it's one of these that never ever opens. No, I can't make it open on full. Oh, it's just come in. <laughs> so we've got the thing on full chat. Well, that's no good to us. Right, see whether we can just improve that a fraction, especially if we can find the squelch control. So we think the squelch control is VR2. It is. So that's now coming in at 100 microvolts, which is equivalent to VEST9 on full. So let's go to the minimum and turn the signal generator off. Set threshold. Radio back on. Sorry, signal generator back on. It's now leaving us as 0.2 of a microvolts and coming in at 0.25 of a microvolts. So I think we've balanced the squelch up very well. I don't recall these having the bestest squelch, there's a wonderful word, but uh, that seems to be okay. So I need to change that preset, so we'll come back to that video when I have found a suitable replacement. It says on it, I think it says 1K, but I'm going to look at the circuit diagram. Tell you what I'm going to just tell you all, I've, I had 184 instruction books and service manuals for free use on scribed s-c-r-i-b-d and the deal was when i did this about 16 years ago was that if you uploaded some stuff it would let you look at stuff at no cost otherwise you have to subscribe for about 12 18 pounds or something a month which is ludicrously expensive not on my church wages anyway so I would say I've got about 184 and over the 16 years I've downloaded two things for me. So uh, it's certainly been very much one-sided and some of these manuals have had 5,000 reads a month. So I know, you know, there's some interest out there. So imagine my surprise when I was trying to download, I think it was a TTI manual which was on there the other month, the other week, and um, I couldn't. It said I needed to pay. So I sent a message. I said... Um, why is this? Because I thought the deal is supposed to be that, um, you know, if you upload a pile of stuff, you can look at things within reason. 
and I hadn't looked at anything for donkey's years. So anyway, two weeks later, I've got an email back, and it, with a link in it, and it says, it, the link says something to the effect of, um, you can have a thirty-day trial, and you know how that's going to be. You've got to lodge your credit card details and all that kind of rubbish. And uh, but I don't want a trial. I want to look at some manuals because it says I could. So, it, you know, they've changed the rules. They've changed the gate post. So, I went straight on there and deleted my 184 manuals and closed the account. When you close the account, it says, why do you want to close the account? It's because you've changed the goal post and, uh, and, and explained this. Anyway, customer services got back. Well, there may have been a way we could have helped you. If you contemplate opening... No. <laughs> Not not playing those games. Somebody has sat in an office and thought that you know that people who are uploading really useful stuff like myself and only asking for the odd download every ten years needs to pay. So no, all my manuals have gone off there. So sorry everybody, but that's it. <laughs> Can't believe it. There really are some daft people sitting in these offices, no doubt earning too much money, and think that everybody can pay twelve quid. Uh, a month for a, a, that service. Well, it's not worth it. So, there you are. That's uh, today's soapbox. And I will see if I can swap that. <clears throat> well, I'm not a believer in blanket changing all the capacitors. But I've just whipped out uh, the main electrolytic there. See, C31. Which is another 1,000 micro, microfarad at 25 volts. So I think we'll just check that. Especially if I can find where I put the meter. There we are. I'm not a believer in blanket capacitor changes, but. Hmm, it's. Uh, that's slightly high as well. Right, I'll go and. Uh, I'll go and get one of those. So I'm just waiting for the hot glue gun to warm up because I need to just stick the meter lamp on. It's been stuck on before. It's just about burnt a hole through the case. Um, so I thought I'd deflux the radio whilst I was waiting for the glue gun to warm up. So I put the lid on. So that's the board I've been working on. And then the main board, which I've not done much apart from the uh, soldering a earth wire onto a pad just there. There's a multiple earth, that's for the meter lamp. But all around the phase lock loop area, 
looks like it's had the IC changed at some point for some reason and it also looked like it had the audio IC changed around here so I've cleaned that up with isopropyl alcohol and it now looks half decent instead of a bodge so if we put the bot I've also cleaned that clip I think we'll just clean the case where the clip is and at least the front gets held on to some degree if you put the we'll put some of the screws in this and we'll cut I'll come I'm not going to do all the screws on video but uh, we'll come back and put the rest in so if I think if I put four in for now Okay, so I'll just put a, a tie around those wires which I've disturbed. And I reckon that wraps it up. So again, I'll put some of the screws in the lid, which is at some point being repainted. 